Hey, what's going on everybody? This video we're going to be talking about the dependency array for use effect. This is the second argument you can pass the function, and the short version of what it does is it allows us to restrict what state we care about for use effect to be triggered. So if you need the basics of use effect, check out the previous video. If you already got a little bit of it figured out, maybe you just need a little bit more practice, this video should probably be good. So let's first just take a look at what we have, which is if you don't pass anything at all as a second argument. So here is our use effect function. It just console logs that the state was updated and then displays the state variable. And there's going to be really like three different ways of doing this. So I'm going to actually summarize these in the comments below. So the first one is if you pass no dependency array. And in this situation, it's going to update for any state change. And we saw this in the previous episode where anytime we search for a word, it executes that use effect callback function. This kind of illustrates the point, but the way to really see this is to actually have more data in state. Doesn't really show us much if we only have one variable here. So what we want to do is create another state variable and we're just going to call this word two. And right now our examples are kind of made up and silly, but in the next couple episodes, we're going to get a little bit more concrete and start building some stuff, but we just got to get this uh, foundational stuff out of the way. So we're going to pretty much define it the same exact way. And similarly, we're going to allow an input to define the value and display it on the page. So let's go ahead and copy this input and the h1 here, we'll paste it again, and we're just going to modify the data. And of course we can have two h1s on the page, come on, we're not barbarians here. Let's go ahead and update these to h2, and then we just gotta update some values. So e target.value for set word two instead of set word one, and then we're going to display set word two. The last change I need to make is actually update the console log to display uh, actually a space and then word two. All right, now all the data in state will be displayed whenever we update the state. So let's just refresh and we should be able to search a word up here in theory. So we'll just say fridge and it updates. Now let's try down here, microwave. Spot it wrong, but yeah, you guys get the point, microwave. You can see this executes anytime we change either of these inputs. So that is if you don't pass any dependency array. The next option is if you pass an empty dependency array. And in this situation, it's going to execute once. So let's try this out. To do it, we're going to put a comma after our callback function and put an empty array. We'll save and I'm going to refresh the page and it has state updated twice actually here. As a reminder from the previous video, we mentioned it might show up twice if you have this strict mode on and you're in development. So don't worry about it, it'll show up twice for that situation, but really you can think of this as executing once. And if we update any of our state variables, you can see nothing shows up in the console, it's done. So I would say you can use use effect with an empty dependency array if you want to do something on initial page load after everything is loaded and set up properly, then you can execute some code. For example, we will probably have this set up when we want to fetch some data to put inside of our web page. We only need to fetch that data at the beginning of the page load and then we can just substitute in the values that are returned from the API into the web page. Now the third option is if you have some values in the array. So for this one, let's just go through the example of passing in Word. We'll save and we'll go back. Let's just get a fresh start, we'll refresh. When we put in something in the first input, such as headphones, you can see this shows up a lot over on the side. If we go over here and update Word 2, screwdriver, well, the state changes, but use effect is not executed. That's because it's only going to execute when the word state is updated. Now a quick note, and most likely it's not going to be a big issue, but because this depends on word, we can trust that word has the most up-to-date value, but it does not depend on word two, so this could in theory be outdated since the set functions are asynchronous, as mentioned in the previous episode. 
So in this situation, use effect is only going to depend on one state variable, and that is word. So what we can do is we can still change this value up here, and it'll still put screwdriver, even though it's word number two, over in the console here. So let's try it out. Let's change this to shoes. And you can see it shows shoes and screwdriver. And screwdriver had plenty of time to update. You know, computers are fast, so for us to go and change screwdriver and then change this one, well, it's just too fast. Screwdriver's already been updated. So again, in this situation, it's not a huge issue, but it's just good to know that use effect is not going to wait around for word two state to be updated. Now the next important thing to know is that you can have use state in your code multiple times with different dependencies. So what we're going to do is we're going to have use state dependent on word one and then we're going to have use state dependent on word two. So we will take this code and we're going to duplicate it and I'm also going to update our comment here so passing in data this will only execute when those state variables are changed. All right, so we have one for word, which I'm just going to get rid of the second variable here. So word, and then we'll have one for word two. Kind of had this displayed weird there. So we use a plus here. All right, cool. Let's try it out. Window, you can see it says state updated window. And then we could say chocolate and it says state updated chocolate. These are two separate functions being executed. You can see this one's defined on line seven and this one on line 11. So this can be done for separation of concerns. If you have one use state to take care of one concept in your application, and then you have another use state to take care of something else. Or for example, maybe you want the initial page load to do something special, but then every other update after that, you just need something different. So you could have use state with an empty array and then use state with some dependencies or no dependency array at all. So that is all for my use effect summary. There's one thing that will get an honorable mention, but we're not going to explain in this video, and that is use effect cleanup. Taking a look at the docs, there is a section on cleaning up an effect, and this is where you return a function, and this will run before the component is removed from the UI. So definitely read into this if you're interested, but we're not going to be using it right now, maybe later in this series. I just want you to know that it's a thing, so if you see use effect returning a function like that, that's what it's doing. Next up, we're going to take the principles we've learned in these couple of last videos and start building an updated application to search for terms and get a dictionary response. So this is going to use an API. So we're finally not just using mock data, we're actually going to consume data that's coming from a backend. So this is gonna be pretty cool, I'm really excited, and hopefully you'll stick around for the next video after you smash that subscribe button, of course. Thank you, I'll see you then.